Um, for those who don't uh, know me, I'm um, I'm Nuno. I'm Portuguese, living in London. Um, so I really like the clouds. That's the only thing I can tell you. I also already um, spent six months in Belgium in 2001. I spent six months in uh, in Brussels, and I said, "How can people live with all the those clouds and everything?" Then I moved to London. So. Don't remind me. Come on. Uh, so I'm a director of cloud service for Didi Europe, um, and I'm also Windows Azure MVP. So I hang around with all of these guys normally in events, which is quite fun. We always behave. Um, we're alive, right? OK. We always behave. Um, uh, we always get the Windows Azure into the very high points. Sometimes higher than others. Um, so the goal here um, that uh, Martin spoke to me about was, oh, do you want to come and share a little bit of what, you, what you've learned? And um, I sent a couple of sessions, and he said, can you do two? OK. So one is Windows Azure Active Directory. The other one is real-time data management. How many of you have used Windows Azure AD? How many of you know what? AD is. OK. So in Windows Azure AD, I can add the machine to my domain, right? Right or not? No. <laughs> so that was one of the first questions we got. To, Windows Azure AD, oh, cool. Can we add machines to the domain? No, it's not a domain controller. Hold on. It's, a, it's, a, it's the directory part. It's not the domain controller part. So let's, let's see a little bit of what is the, the Windows Azure AD. Uh, and then let's go to a couple of functionalities like access control service, directory, graph, multi-factor authentication, which is really, really interesting. Uh, and then go to tenant administration and uh, libraries. And then a couple of scenarios, thinking of, OK, I have my on-premise AD. I now want to use Windows Azure AD or want to put some, um, some applications in the cloud, how do I share what I have on premise because I want single sign-on? So what are the options? What can I do? OK, so as you all know, Microsoft is doing um, a cloud OS approach. Have you heard that term, cloud OS? Cloud OS basically means that they want to create one area, so one set of tools that will work cloud, and on-prem. Same API, same level of capability. It's not there yet. It's getting there. So this means that in the public cloud, I have Office 365, private, I have Microsoft Office. Not the same thing. Similar functionalities, yes. But this is a shared environment, so I can't have this exact same thing. Windows Server, Windows Azure, System Center. Actually, we have similar things in Intune when it grows up. Um, so it's still, it's still a baby. It's growing up. There's a lot of things you can do with System Center. Have you tried System Center monitoring uh, cloud services, for example? Everybody loved it, right? It was one of the most painful experiences in my life. Um, just a part of, oh, I now want to monitor my custom performance counter. I had to go to 2007, create the the, the monitor and then get it back in import in 2012. So it's not there yet. For infrastructure as a service, perfect. Everything in System Center works there. So there are a lot of similarities. And the goal is to create common technologies that go in between in order to connect both of dots. So this is Microsoft approach. And the goal is, what if we could provide a way in the cloud to get Windows, uh, to get the normal Active Directory. So the normal users, all that, all that stuff in the cloud, and even, OK, someone is sending tweets. It's good, because we, we get it. Um, that thing doesn't turn off, by the way. Uh, so in a way that when we create the AD, what happens? What's the protocol that we use for the AD? It's a very 
proven protocol, right? LDAP, very proven, that works brilliantly in the, in the internet, right? Actually is a piece of crap when it goes to the internet. They told me I could swear. Um, so, uh, how much is the percentage cost? How many? What's my budget? Okay. <laughs> okay, so we have LDAP. Doesn't work too well in the internet. So we needed to have something which is more internet friendly. What if we could get this? And for example, have REST APIs. What if we could go and have the flexibility we have in, in uh, social like Facebook or something in order to go and do a graph API, understand who are my friends, who are the friends of my friends, and things like that. Wouldn't that be cool? So that is what Windows, Actor, uh, Windows Azure Active Directory is. It's basically Active Directory, the directory part, as a service in the cloud with the modern, uh, modern internet providers. So we're talking about RESTful APIs. We're talking about Graph APIs also in order to provide me a way to interact with it without LDAP, but with something which is really simple like any other service. Does that make sense? If it doesn't, throw me something. Or better, throw Martin. It's better. <laughs> No, 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 no. So the goal is we're in an age that I have my on-premise stuff, my AD, and suddenly a customer comes and say, oh, I want to start to get my applications in the cloud. Okay, we do a web application, we ship it up into a cloud service. Every, life's good, everything's good. Then suddenly they come and say, oh, I now have Office 365. Can we share the, the same identity? Okay, we can. Oh, by the way, I have Active Directory on-prem. Can I sync it? Yes. Okay, we'll, we'll tweak it. Oh, and by the way, I have some customers that have Google IDs and Yahoo's and things like that. Can I open? Can I use them too? Please, please. And so this is where the problem starts to get in. I have too many dependencies. Live ID, Facebook, no, Microsoft account, sorry. Uh, Google, Yahoo. Office 365, what's, what's the identity provider for Office 365? You guys know? Organizational account. What's your organizational account? Windows Azure AD. It was from the start. Um, when it was BPOS, it wasn't actually Windows Azure AD. Then with the new one, it came Windows Azure AD without the fancy APIs, and then the fancy APIs came. So it's the exact same thing. So when people tell, oh, Windows Azure AD is not proven yet. I don't know, maybe it is with the amount of customers that is in Office 365. Okay, and everybody got migrated from BPOS to Office 365. There is a lot of users coming. So it's already proven. Maybe the APIs, you can say that. But the functionality itself, it's proven. So the Active Directory has a continuum. It depends on the level of abstraction and the cost effectiveness that you want. So, oh, I want to control everything. I'm a control freak. Do you know anybody that is a little bit of control freak? I was in a, in a customer once, and we were talking about Windows Azure, as usual. And suddenly I explain, okay, Windows Azure will help you provision new machines, will help you um, better automate your system. And it goes, it starts, looks at me weird, and looks like, shit, shit. And I was, what? And the guy goes, and in this company, I'm Azure. I was, okay, so you're the control freak type. Okay, so control freak type. You control everything, yes. Scalable, high available, you do it yourself. If you like it, yeah, it's perfect. If you want to do, oh, I want my Active Directory, but I'm used to my Active Directory with my domain controller also. I want to create my, uh, my domain, but I want to add my machines to the domain. I want to manage the group policies. All of that stuff that I have in the AD, I still need uh, 
a little bit of control, but I want to get more cost effective. So I go to Active Directory in the cloud. So basically what I do is I put this in a VM and basically open the endpoints. And from there on, I have Active Directory in a more cost effective way. But there is nothing like platform as a service where I actually go use it like Windows Azure AD. In that case, I have self-provisioning, management, scale into my needs, and it's fault tolerant. And it's as a service. I don't need to do anything other than provisioning and managing. All the hardware and all the stuff, forget about it. But only if I don't need the group policies part and all that stuff. And that's what you're seeing to move a little bit to Intune when you manage your devices, where you start to manage a little bit of the services. Make sense? So continuum, either you get control or abstraction. So right now, most of the companies will go here, potentially. They go into Windows, uh, Windows Azure AD when they want, for example, oh, I want to extend that, for example, to my web applications, my websites, and basically they start to, to have the two. IS on a VM, their own IS, or even their own IS on-prem, and do a directory sync with Windows Azure AD in order to create more scalability. For example, to put multi-factor authentication for phones and things like that. So this is interesting for all types of company, enterprises, medium-sized companies, small business, in delivering the several different application. Enterprise application, I want the centralized policy in order to go through. Potentially, I'm talking about AD in the VM. If I'm talking about the small business, normally they want, I just want the damn thing to work, and then Windows Azure AD will be uh, good enough. This is a little bit of the, of the timelines. So the most important one, so GA, and then you see that there are more and more drops coming. And now it's almost every two weeks that something is coming around this. This is the power of the cloud. This is also something that should be in here, which is the power and the availability, the speed of the availability of new, new features, which is completely different from here. So what about the functionalities? What, what does it do? So we have the most important part. We have one, one area, which is the Windows Azure AD Access Control Service. I love this name. We actually tried. We got um, uh, internally on the distribution list. We were trying to get the biggest Twitter handle uh, made, and this one won one of the biggest. I don't remember if it won or not. I think there was one pretty close also, but I don't think I can say it. Um, so basically, Windows Azure AD, Access Control Service. What is this? Who remembers this one? ACS. So the ability for me to have, um, basically, this is a federation gateway. I can go register my identity providers. From those identity providers, I can actually have my applications go and connect to it. So for example, I can go to my phone and say, register with this ACS, and it will bring up a page where I could choose Google or Microsoft account or something else. And also, that's in the authentication part. In the authorization part, it's a claim-based service. So I could actually do authorization based on claims. It's still there. It's part of the AD now. The directory part. Ability for me to create the directory, create users. It's a cloud-based identity store. Again, it's not the domain controller. It's an identity store. And you'll see that the Windows Azure AD is growing like in, in blocks, in building blocks. ACS for social connections. Directory for identity store. Graph API in order to provide a better protocol and a way for me to work. Up the the multi-factor authentication 
in order to provide better authentication because more and more our, our clients are talking to us and say, hey, yes, perfect, user and password is great, but I now need something else. I need something more. I need them to receive, for example, a code in their phone and, and go from there. So this is, this is what's being built. And this was, uh, was built by acquiring a company. Microsoft acquired the company in order to do this. And then authentication library. Because, yeah, the APIs are really good and calling RESTful APIs is really good, but having a wrapper around it to make it simple, it's even better. So, access control service. What it is, claim-based authentication, federated um, authorization service. Basically, provides you the way to to basically have several different identity providers that you can configure. It's not in your app. Your app trusts us ACS. ACS is the one that has trust with a lot of different identity providers. So this is the gateway that is going to tell you, oh, I want to authenticate against Google. I go to Google, pass it the token, and the token gets, gets authenticated. I have a trust between the two. So the, the goal of this was to build this kind of challenges. So I want the user to be able to come from AD, Microsoft account, Facebook account, or any other thing. This was the goal. So this was the problem statement that ACS was here to solve. So create something in the middle that will provide that capability. So this was at the end. So if my application trusts ACS and then ACS has a trust with all the others, this will solve my issue. What's the other issue that comes? This sends a token, which is not the same as this one, not the same as Facebook, not the same as Yahoo or any other thing. All of them are different. So what does that mean for my application? Do I need to build it in a way that understands all those tokens? No. Basically, other than the Federation Gateway, also it builds a transformation. So I transform my crazy uh, different tokens that I receive into one that will be my token for my app. All my apps that register against this ACS will get the exact same token independently of where they came from. So there's a token transformation here. This way, my app only knows this token, doesn't know anything else, doesn't need to. Right? The other part is the directory service. Let me change here into the directory service. So if I go to manage Windows Azure, and if this stops, jumping around and actually do something. Um, so you have, you probably saw that in the last few days there was a change in the portal, right? So basically the change is that now you have the ability to, when you go to subscriptions, you have a lot of different directories. So until now everything was done with a Microsoft account, I can now have um, also the organizational accounts. And by default, when I get one, it actually creates one directory for me, and all the users get dependent to that. And the other interesting thing is that I can actually move, if I don't want all those, so one per subscription, I can actually, or per account, what I can do is change from one to the other. Right? So, I can have here, now I can see, based on my several identities, which, where is which. So, this is, this is one of my, my accounts. So, apply. Okay, don't apply. So, the Active Directory, when I go, 
another new thing is the ability that came with for me to create multiple Active Directories, Windows Azure ADs in the same subscription, which until now was uh, until a couple of, of months back, it was really cool because imagine you have you were managing your customers' subscriptions and everything they have of you. It was really cool when you first tested Windows Azure AD. You said new at Azure AD. The name was I don't care block um, and hit it. And suddenly you look at it, and it was the most interesting thing because it was appeared like subscription shared by all the subscriptions, which was really cool because now I couldn't delete it, and I already used all my customers' subscriptions, and they didn't couldn't even use Active Directory now in their subscriptions. So it was really cool was a really cool feature. So finally that was solved, yay. Um, there was actually a, a technique to work around that because that was actually assigned to the Microsoft account you used. So you could actually create multiple if you change Microsoft accounts. But that was a trick, it wasn't ideal. So in the Active Directory you have of course your access control namespaces, of course you already know this one, and the directory. So I can go and say I want a new directory and it's as easy as create okay, as, as you be uh, test demo yeah sounds like a, I'm in Belgium pretty sure. So we create an AD so what this is going to, to give us is the ability now I can actually use this. I can create users on top. First thing it does is, okay, there is a new uh, directory service. Let me add your, your user that is currently logged on into here and make it an administrator of this directory service because or else we couldn't do anything with it. Another is actually define some applications, so create applications that will be not only applications that will leverage this, but also applications that want to use Graph API and things like that. So if I want, what I can do is go to users and I say, okay, I want to add a user into this uh, new organization, let me call it test, and let's say which is Azure B user group, and, and its role, which role do I want, and yay, create a temporary password. Now I have a temporary password. What do I do with this? So I can also go to login.microsoftonline.com and I can actually I mean, not use this one, not to destroy my own things. And And now I can use test at Azure B, Azure B test demo, right? Yay, I'm here. So I have a user, it's a normal user. One of the things which is, if I actually knew where my demo phone was, um, I could actually text my phone. Um, so one of the things that we can do is actually leverage leverage another thing, which is change and say, I want to now provide multi-factor authentication, which is another capability. So access denied, come on. I'm pretty sure I'm the owner of this crap.
No, oh, this feature is nice. Let's try again. I'm still as new now, which is good. You always get new things when you try to demo it. So you go here, this one, users. Oh, crap, I don't want to do this. I don't want to give access to my account. That's a cool new one. So, administrators add. Me. So if I go, since this is for the subscription, if I go now, hopefully this will work. Where's ED? So ED shared. So users, let me put that user as a global admin. Anything else? Save. Okay, so we go there. Now let let me have this as administrator for my own account. Azure. No, Azure B test demo. At, no tests at it should be just demo at on microsoft.com very interesting name I'm glad this is being recorded can we send that live to the team saying uh yeah I don't know. This new feature doesn't look right. <laughs> hey, Victoria, we have a new thing for you. This crap doesn't work. Thank you. Okay. So you can imagine that that thing works. Um, we will thank Victoria. Um, so. The directory service is basically providing you the, with the users, the capability of creating users, uh, which are users or global administrators. And then, of course, it doesn't provide you with the ability to connect machines. It's not the domain controller, but you can actually connect both. So another thing is the graph API. So you know, like in LDAP, you have a lot of tools, or if you really like that much LDAP, you can do it on my end. Um, feel free. And you can actually create, you can actually query everything that it's out there. So the Graph API is going to provide you exactly the same thing. So the Graph API, when you create an Active Directory in the cloud, so one of the things that you create is actually say, I have users, and I now have an application. I have an application that I want to register here. So I can, can actually do this for, for the new one from scratch. So I want to add an application. My application is going to be called um, anything particular, Azure B Test. It's a it's a web application or a web API, okay? Which type are you going to be using? So Azure B e test demo. How's the directory access that you're going to provide? Is it only single sign-on? Am I going to only provide identity to this, or do I only want to single sign-on and 
have read writes or do I want to write also? I also want to write. Okay? So what it does, it creates my my application. So I have my application. And now what do I do with this? I have my application registered. Perfect. Does this help me? I now want to create a very dumb. Um, so let me change here. You all read very well, hopefully. Now you probably do. So basically what I'm going to tell is my application principle, which is my client ID of my directory service. So a way for me to, to say this is the ID that I'm going to use in order to interact with you. Uh, now, Azure B test demo on Microsoft.com. So this is the tenant, the Windows Azure AD tenant that I'm going to be using. And now I have here a password, which I also require to use. So let's go here. Oh, I don't have a key. So basically, I can generate the key. I have two options, either one or two years duration. Uh, and now when I save it, I'm actually going to view this key. One thing here is you better save this key somewhere. Because this is the first and last time you're seeing it. So I now go, go to my application, put it in there. And it's good. Yeah, you saved everything? Yeah, so good. Um, no, I, I'm just telling that because if now I saved it, now I go somewhere else and I go back. Oh, I have a key. I have a key. Do you tell jokes about lawns? Yeah, so. I have a key. You star, 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 star. I know your key. So you go now, and what this very stupid uh, application does, it has a couple of controllers. One is my user controller. So my user controller, which is basically going to my directory service, creating a query into my users. So it goes, it does a query just like a link query, and it provides me a way to simply go and automate with this. So if I run this, what I'm going to see is a simple MVC application that now I can use to manage all that. So I can go and see, do I have groups? No, I don't. Do I have users? Oh, no, I don't. What the hell happened? Azure. I don't even know how to write a real thing. Come on. I should be. Let's try it again. So go. Normally works better when you write the right stuff. Okay. So now what I can do is I can go and create the display name test test screen enable true. I can create the group. I can let's create another one. This one is a very good group. And now I can do like searches, which work very well. So this is one on the groups, same thing I can do on user management. The only thing that I'm using here is the, the graph API. 
so I don't need to use LDAP anymore. So you like this one? Like this one? So it's saying that it's external. This is a way for him to say with, this is a Microsoft account. If it's external, it's a Microsoft account. So this is a way for me to go, and if I go now and say here, test two, test two, account is enabled, I get a password, and hit it. I now have a new user that if I go back, I should have my new user come up at any point when the damn thing restarts. And if I go into my other login, shush, login Microsoft Online, test two at the Azure, Azure B test demo. What a stupid name. Like so, yes, it was created. This is all through the Graph API only. So, Graph API. Have you used like uh, data services for? So it's an abstraction on top of all those elements. So it provides you an easy way to interact with normal level directory services um, APIs through the, this wrapper to this layer, which is a graph API. It's very powerful, really good. It's going and getting better and better uh, and trying to be a, an enterprise graph API, similar to what Facebook graph API can do. So, it's a new enterprise social. Have you used the uh, Facebook Graph API social? So it's the same concept for enterprises. It's bringing the enterprise, the new directory services, into a new level. RESTful interfaces, enterprise ready, ability to extend your, your elements, do searches, everything, without leveraging LDAP, which doesn't like very well the internet. So, JSON, OData, OAuth is what they are using. Okay, multi-factor authentication. The damn thing that I really would love to, to work. So, basically what is this? The ability for you to go, imagine you have a user, and this user goes now, and in order to authenticate, I don't only need to go and give them access and he needs to know the password, but he also needs to put something else. He needs to put the security code that goes through SMS, so a text message or an email, for example. How many of you are users of Xbox? Just for tests, of course. I, I just do a little bit of testing every now and then. Uh, and one of the things they change is they actually now start to do multi-factor authentication on the accounts. So whenever you try to, to play, they're going to say, oh, you're logging in with this. Can you please tell me something like I can connect with you in order to make sure you are who you say you are? So I get a text message and I put, until I go, into my live account and actually verify that, that that machine is something I trust. Okay? So it's it's basically the goal is to prove that you are who you say you are. Which in our days is more and more important. You don't want to to be uh, I I read once um, one article yesterday about the NSA and um, the ability to go inside a lot of different encryption levels. Uh, so, yeah, other than those, you want every other people not to have access to your stuff. 
other than those, of course, um, because you can't do anything. So the last one is Azure Authentication Library. Basically, a developer library you can use is a NuGet library you can use for this. But let's go to tenant administration, same level. So in the cloud, I can use Azure AD for everything. On-premise, same exact thing, Windows Server AD. The only difference is in the cloud, I use Graph API. On-premise, I use LDAP. Nothing strange in there. Same ability, the same capacity. The important part is when I go to tenant administration, what if I want to do something like I have my Windows Server AD that I now want to extend into my Azure AD? What do I do? And those are the scenarios. It's typical integration scenarios. So imagine you have an application that is a cloud-only application. So you go and you say, OK, I want Office 365, CRM, or any other thing always and all of them to use my new directory service. But I don't want to install anything. For that, I create my Windows Azure AD, which will provide me my directory store, will provide me my Graph API if I want. If I really love PowerShell, which I started to, to like a little bit uh, since I started working with Windows Azure. And, um, and if I want that, I will have a single authentication platform for all of them. This is Active Directory Windows Azure AD. No problems there. So my user goes, gets authenticated, and I can move on. From a directory synchronization, I want my user on the AD, on my company, company network. And I now have Office 365, Intune, all that stuff. And my cloud services, how can I connect to them? What I can do is create, there is a tool called Directory Sync. This Directory Sync, what it goes is connects both of them. One of the things that it doesn't is send your password. So it doesn't, your password is only here with Directory Sync. User is replicated for authentication. You need to come here. So this is the options. I can go through Directory Sync, which is part of the Windows Azure AD. If I go to integration, I actually have this part in order to download, configure, and everything. If I have Office 365, they have the Office 365 connector, which now is the exact same thing, just with a different uh, executable, but it's the exact same thing. I have PowerShell and Graph API. If I have an enterprise, a more enterprise approach to this, then I have forefront identity management. And I can also use it in order to connect both on-prem and Windows Azure AD. So it's already possible to leverage this because the agent that they use, they are going to allow and even more powerful than this one. The other one is actually say, so in this case, the only thing I have in there is my user, nothing else. I can query, OK, where is Sam? Where is Eve? I have their user, nothing else. Which OU does, do they, they are part of, all that stuff. I cannot provide single sign-on. If I want single sign-on, I need ADFS2 in order to expose the element, in order to do the SAML authentication, and then the directory sync, which makes my user exist in there. And now I have a trust relationship between my AD and the Active uh, Actuary Federation services. So what it does is when my user gets authenticated, so I go into my login.microsoftonline.com, I go in there, when I put a user which is actually here, it's a federated, 
what it does is it receives the user and password, sends it to here. And only when that provides you with an OK, you're really OK. So your password never goes into the cloud. You don't replicate. There is only way for you to do that. And that is putting an AD in Windows Azure VMs and actually create the authentication with ADFS. Then you can. With the Windows Azure AD, no. OK? Windows Azure AD only stores the passwords for the elements created in there, not for anything that is federated. If it's federated, it's because it's authenticated somewhere else. You're very quiet. What happened? I remember Belgium, but uh, after, I don't know, how many, one, two years, everything was different. I work, For some reason, I worked in, um, uh, I worked six months with CBDR in direct, which was, um, near to Zaventin. And uh, we were a lot of times going to Ghent. So for some reason, there it was completely different. I think it was the part of the university and the beers. And the Spanish girls that were in there. But oh, OK, forget about that. OK. Oh. <laughs> she knows. We were working at the same company, and I was I didn't have the best of the um, they weren't saying <laughs> the best <laughs> things about me. Okay, can we cut that out? <laughs> Let's edit that bad part. Okay, so ADFS, federation options. ADFS works perfect. Third party STS. Um, so there are a couple of them out there that you can use in order to provide this authentication and this bridge. And Shibboleth. Have you used Shibboleth? It's really interesting. Doing the connection between Windows Azure AD and Shibboleth is really cool. Really, really. I wouldn't, I wouldn't tell you to do it, but it's really cool. You do it once and you think, yeah, now I know how they feel. Now I know. It's like, uh, yeah, painful. But yeah, it works. It works. At the end of the day, it works. So the federated authentication, basically we have the directory sync. We have when someone tries to connect in order to create the, what the hell? In order to create the authentication, you have directory sync, you have the ADFS proxy in order to allow you to do the stop. Shouldn't be. So and you can also leverage that with Intune and everything. So normally you have directory sync and ADFS proxy. OK, it's probably selling. I'm almost out of time. So integration options, no integration, directory sync, and SSO. Rows, no integration, everything is in the cloud. Awesome. No servers required, anything. No single sign-on with on-premise, of course. So directory only, very interesting. You can query all your users, all your stuff you cannot do the single sign-on. Why? There's no federation. So feather directory and single sign-on, it will actually provide you with the full capability. You should always have ADFS and the ADFS proxy in there. The reason is because if you expose ADFS directly, it's a security problem. You need to always put the proxy in in order to provide a couple of more added security measures and only communicate with what you actually should be communicating with. If you open that the ADFS, a lot of bad things can happen. Hackers really love that. So this is in a very nutshell Windows Azure AD. Did that help? You want to throw something in Martin? Beers? <laughs> okay, so questions. Yeah. It depends on how your configuration 
So, but normally what it does, it's every, um, it can be configured, but it's not immediately. It's, uh, it's through, it's a batch process. You can decide. When you do the directory sync, you decide exactly which is the configurations you're going to say. One of them is how often is that being done? Normally you would put something, if it, you're not getting users every single day. If it's, for example, oh, I'm putting this for my Office 365, I'm not getting users every day, probably it's once a day I do the, the, the link. If it's not, then I will do it something, something different. If this, from on-premise. When you do the directory sync uh, configuration, it's always from on-premise. On-premise starts the configuration. Uh, actually, one of the things that when I was doing this for an enterprise, um, they were going through all the all the elements and monitoring all the connections. And it was interesting because the only thing that is said in the documentation is that you only need outbound communication. It's not actually true. Because ADFS work with inbound also in order to return something. So what actually when they started to probe everything, all the communications, they got some things back and it wasn't working. Because basically he was initiating and it was sending a response and that response wasn't being uh, received so we couldn't synchronize anything. Because in order to synchronize, you need to know what's there. And then the customer said, oh, what's this happening? Why is this communication coming back? So we had to Two things: one, go to the to the team and ask, and the other thing is go and um, we need to edit this part later, um, decompile the stuff uh, in order to understand what what was happening. And basically, what they are trying to do is, okay, I'm sending you the list of what's there in order for me to to only throw what's what I should, what's new, and what changed. Okay, any more questions? Yeah, you can you can customize your domains. So uh, one of the things that you have in uh, in your is the ability for you to have a custom domain. So you can then have the custom domains and map them. So in order to not get to on Microsoft.com, which is a perfect reasonable domain to tell everybody, come on, I'm in AD. How oh, how do you know I'm using Windows Azure AD, I don't know, the on Microsoft.com, potentially. Or the cloudapp.net. Oh, this is a cool application. Is it in Windows Azure? No, I just fooled you. OK, questions? No? Customize logging screen. Right now, no. In ACS, you can. In ACS, you can. Uh, which was really interesting because you downloaded um, an HTML file that you could uh, that you could change around. In this one, no. It's always that pretty screen. It's pretty. Has a couple of things. Um, let me show it again. It's like I'm glad I'm not a, a designer. That's login. So you're talking about this screen, lovely screen. Yeah, both of them. It depends on how you get there. When you go through this login, Microsoft.com goes through the Office 365, but it's the same thing. When you go to an app, it's a blue one. It's the same thing. You can change it. 